All right. Well, you've already heard the sermon this morning. There it is. I don't think I could add anything to that. We appreciate it so much. And thank the Lord. All right. Well, we, we do want to add some more to that tribute a little bit later. Uh, and uh, Caleb, we get some sun out there? Hopefully. A little bit, maybe. Maybe we'll have some sun here before too long. All right. All right. And Tim, we've got to go to work whether it's sun or shine, don't we? That's right. <laughs> that guy's a hard working fella. That's a hard working fella back there. All right. Well, we do want to honor the Lord this morning. We're reading two verses in Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. And this does involve a mother. Matthew chapter 8, beginning with verse uh, 14 there. Just a couple of verses. Matthew chapter 8, verse 14. And when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother lying sick with fever. And he touched her hand, and the fever left her. And she rose and ministered to them. God has given you and I multiple ways to communicate with other people. Bridges that can cross the gulf that separates us from the rest of the world. And one of those is the language of words, is the, is the use of words. And some people can use words very effectively to connect with other people. And I thank God for that gift. People can be persuaded sometimes with words or encouraged with words. Oh, uh, every year in Kansas City, down, down by the plaza, they, they do a Shakespeare production uh, in a park there for several days. Doesn't cost anything. And I like to go down there if the mosquitoes aren't too bad and watch those elaborate costumes and that music and, and uh, enjoy the outdoor setting. The speeches are all in Shakespearean English. Uh, wow, some of those speeches are, are pleasant and some of them are angry and sometimes, as Eric says, at the end of the play, just everybody's dead up there on stage, you know. Just, that's you know, Shakespeare. That's Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> they don't all turn out that way, but some of them do. But, they, but I'm told that Shakespeare used a vocabulary, an English vocabulary of 15,000 words. Did you know there were so many? But sometimes words fail, and we need a second bridge between human souls. And one of those is the language of art. Uh, my, emotions, my emotions are moved by music. And uh, I get powerfully moved by music sometimes. Other people have the same response in, in paintings or sculpture. And, and I don't see much value in some of that, uh, uh, nearly as much as some people do, I guess, but it is a way of communication that moves people. And another way people are touched is uh, another, through another bridge of action, the language of gesture and the language of symbol and touch and the mother caresses her baby. Doctor lays his hand on the patient's fevered brow. I can still almost remember my mother when I was nine years old, sick with pneumonia, laying a hand on my brow. I certainly remember my dad when I was a little older and trying to get things right with God and I, 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 I correct something in my life and I talked to him and I said I'm sorry and he put a hand to touch me I remember that so very very well hands are laid when a young man is stepping forward in the ministry ordination other times when we request God to come in a powerful way for healing we gather around and put a hand on his or her shoulder and we're praying for him as God asks us to do and called us to do in those times of, of need. And God has answered prayer for us so many, many times. Touch is greater than words. Now think of Jesus this morning and his touch. Jesus 
brought something into his message about childhood when he laid his hands on the children gathered around him that uh, as they clamber into his arms, put their tasseled heads on his shoulder and reached with their grubby hands at his robe and, and their, put their laughing eyes, locked their laughing eyes into his. It was all a special thing. Isaiah had said hundreds of years before that Jesus would be carrying the lambs in his bosom. And he did it because he loved them and he was trying to connect with them. Teaching more in those moments than in the words that he spoke. Jesus said, blessed are the merciful. Whoever has a cup of cold water, as much as you have done it to the least of these, you've done it to me. And all that has to teach us that, there, that we have a gospel of human touch and sympathy and, and heart even more powerful than, than this was his touch on a leper from this chapter, a little earlier in the chapter, touched a man more than any words could ever mean. Young officer in the English army, uh, Duke of Wellington, was being sent on a dangerous and almost impossible mission. And he said, sir, give me one grip of your of your all-conquering hand, and I'll see this thing through. I want to think about the touch of Jesus this morning and some things, those to whom it came and to whom it comes today. And I will say that I need the touch of Jesus sometimes, even, even this week, even this morning. He came with his hand to touch me, my heart, my name. First of all, Jesus touched me the... The kindling of a great expectancy. Take the patient in our text. Why did Jesus touch her? Every time Jesus used the touch, I believe it meant to, was meant to strengthen a person's faith, to inspire some hope, and that something is going to happen. Now, sometimes you and I feel a little disappointment in our spiritual achievement, and years are passing by, and we only have one life to live, and we find ourselves wondering if we're accomplishing all that we'd like to, if God wants us to, and failing things sometimes that, that plague us from the past, and maybe they've already been forgiven, but we thought we would have been further along than we are now, but, but, but why? Why? There it is. Jesus said, James said, you have not because you ask not. And I think that's part of our problem. One writer said, blessed are those who expect nothing, for they will never be disappointed. Well, sometimes we, we find ourselves there. But Jesus says something different. Blessed are they who expect the impossible. And too often the old story is true that Jesus cannot do some mighty work in your life or mine because of unbelief. We weren't expecting anything to happen. Then he touches us and he puts his finger on the sore place in our life and the, on the wound that sometimes we like to hide. Not show to other people, but it's there just the same. And he touches us by a word in a hymn or, or some prayer or some conversation. There are times in my life when I can look back and see that the word of the friend who spoke to me brought such light to my situation. I'm sure those people have forgotten that. At least any extent of meaningfulness that it's meant to be through the, through the years. But it was significant. Just a word, conversation, a touch. But you see, through some experience like that, our faith is, is born and our hope is renewed and, and our hardness is broken up and we receive the imprint of God. We know that it cannot come from something human. It has to come from his hand because no other explanation for it. He, he sent it. He's on the throne. And miracles happen. And he loves us more than we can imagine. Well, there's a second reason Jesus touch, touches us, not only to inspire hope, but Jesus' touch was meant to announce a great truth. 
And the truth is this, it's never God's way to deal with life's problems and human needs from a safe distance. God comes right down to where you are and where I am and meets us right in our home, right in our bedroom, right in our automobile, right on our lazy boy, at our point of human need. Wasn't the whole life of Jesus a symbol of that? Bethlehem was God touching man, coming down in a marvelous way, God, God, God with us. Coming to our poverty, coming to our weakness, coming to uh, against the, the arrogance of, of the political powers, coming to us in our humiliation and our desperate lostness, as near as he could get. Calvary was God touching us again. God's everlasting arms opening up to our, to our fallen manhood and gripping us and lifting us up and love made contact with us even if it had to stoop to man's greatest expression of evil to do it. Now look at the Old Testament. Look at the rules and regulations for the lepers, people who had that, the leprosy, which is... Uh, an out an analogy of sin. That that awful disease. One thing you'll never find a story in the Old Testament about is someone touching a leper. They didn't do it. Uh, it was outside the camp with you, outside the gates. Get away from me. Don't uh, don't touch me. Keep away back. Keep back from the road where the people travel. You who are clean, if you come to him or her standing there. Draw your robes about you and hurry fast and get away quickly. That was the scene. That was the conversation in the Old Testament. And it wasn't just lepers that were treated like that. It was all the world's unfortunates. Even in the New Testament, the Pharisees were great at lecturing sinners. And actually, they reveled in that, talking down to folk who were not like them. Couldn't follow the regulations that they weren't following anyway. Uh, it was all at a safe, at such a distance. Uh, and the ideas of personal contact with, with the lost world would have shocked them. But Jesus touched the sinner. He touched the leper. Drew them to himself. He touched the children. He touched the, the sick. There are some great stories of men and women who have served their generations. Some at present and some in past generations. I love to read some of those stories. Lepers, other unfortunate peoples, and now today those with AIDS and other things. Uh, unfortunate people, the world, men and women who practice God's love with a touch, working in ghettos or uh, the hoods, uh, neighborhoods, uh, unfortunate people, missionaries, nurses, following in Jesus' steps who did not just, just contact people from a safe distance, but he came all the way and he touched. He reaches all the way down to our, into our very heart with his hand this morning. Well, Jesus touched people and to kindle an expectancy and he touched people to announce a great truth but and God came down to where men uh, were and, and you and I are but thirdly this morning the touch of Jesus meant achieving a great victory a great victory verse 15 tells us Jesus touched her hand and the fever left her there must be thousands of people, and I think it's millions of people, to whom, if they could only hear this, this would be the good news. The fever left. The fever left. Now, I don't think that means just bodily temperature above 98 point, 97 point, 7, 98 point, something like that. Six. Six. Gary knows. He's, he's been there and over that sometime, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, don't think it's just that. I, I, I think 
There are lots of fevers. Fevers of a fretful mind, like I have sometimes. Fevers of a, of a soul that's not at rest, and there's, there are things that are, that are troubling us sometimes. And, and like what's for me this week, what great news it is that, the, that when the fever pinch gets high in your world and mine, Jesus can touch us and can lift us from that in a moment. In a moment as I was praying and seeking God, he came. He came. Hallelujah. Aren't there a lot of people this morning um, for whom the, the fever of life is just ruining their joy, just ruining their, their peace, uh, ruining their lives? What causes that fever? Well, I think the stress of life is one cause, the steady strain of life, burden of work that, that just takes it out of us sometimes. Uh, sometimes it's the rub that other people, of other people on us, and it is difficult sometimes to deal with some of those issues, and people aren't always kind out there, and they're not always considerate, and, and uh, Take some of their stress out on you sometimes. Part of it's our inability to relax and let ourselves go and, yes. and feel the freedom of, of some rest. Even when we try to rest sometimes, muscles are tight and, and mind is racing and, and we're just not doing any good. Sometimes it's worry, depression, Maybe something's wrong somewhere and we feel like we're so powerless to make it right. And all we can do is pray and yet that is one wonderful thing we can do. A feeling that life is not as kind to us that it might have been. Sometimes it's a feeling of hope defeated or, or deferred, put off, and sometimes it's just a result of trying to find our restless, hungry, eternal soul satisfy our our restless soul with, with with the things of this world and they're never going to satisfy and so the fever comes we're crying out to God and our hearts are not at peace and life grows hot and feverish and restless and Jesus touched her hand the Bible said the fever left her I, I think there's some here this morning that and no, that story is true because it happened to you. It's happened to you a lot of times. The fever left you when God came. Uh, Jesus touched you. Maybe it was just a, a chance word that somebody spoke or, or seemed to be a chance word, but it met your need. Might have been a few notes from an old hymn that, that brought some memories and some praise and inspired some faith in your heart. Might have been a little child's voice who awakened an inch, uh, uh, a memory or, or the, gave you a key to understand some of the, the, the joy of, of living in this world. His gracious hand upon us and what he's doing in our lives. It might have been during a quiet time when uh, you heard the voice of the Spirit as you were reading God's word or or meditating on his promises uh, and the fever left but I have good news this morning whatever whatever you may be straining at or fretting about now the, 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 the steady hand of God can give you healing that you need and relax your spirit today before this day is over I want to tell you something. There's far more in Christ to steady you and touch you and comfort you and help you than there is in life that can come to trouble you and, and defeat you. And sometimes a fever is not a, a fear of worry or, or trouble, but it's a fever of sin. What about that? Can God cure that? Oh, I'm so glad to tell you that he can. All things... Uh, if, if things have been said and things done and, and there's some shame back there and every one of us were caught in a web of things that we're not so proud of back there. I want to remind you that 
that uh, God come and reaches down. Jesus is is here to lift your head, and it's 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 no use struggling anymore. It's no good to do that. Jesus will come and touch you and lift you in that need. His touch was a hand that was nailed to the cross for your sin, for, uh, shed blood for your sin and mine. And if you take your sin to him this morning on the authority of this holy book and the experience in my life, the Bible says he'll take that sin and throw it into the depths of the sea, never to be remembered against you again. Hallelujah. Well, Jesus' hand doesn't just touch, but it drips. He wants to inspire faith and hope and courage in this day. You can open up your heart to his grace. There's a story about a party of, of men that had a guide, and they were climbing in the Alps when, when suddenly a, a crevice opened up and the ice and snow, and someone was cut off from the rest of the team, and he just stood there trembling, not knowing what to do. And, and the cry came out, jump, man, jump. And the, the guide screamed those words to him and, and reaching out with his hand, he said, I'll get you. This hand has never lost a man yet. Well, that man jumped and he was saved. Thank the Lord. Holy Savior. You can trust this Savior. Hear me. That's God's word. That's truth far more than I can verify, but he can verify that to your heart and touch you and give you release this morning. We've got a tribute to mothers. I want to just say a prayer first and then we'll turn this over so to my wife for just a moment, so don't go anywhere. Father, thank you for your gracious love to us the beautiful day that you've given us, the privilege of being here, some with their mothers and some others of us with some memories that, um, that we treasure in our hearts. Thank you for your goodness, your grace, your love. We pray that if there be one here who hasn't found peace with you today, that soul would not be content until they found the touch of Jesus coming into their lives as we cry out for your mercy and grace. Strengthen us this day. Glorify your name. Touch these tremendous needs that we pray for today. And as we continue to take them before the throne, we ask your help and grace in Jesus' name. Amen. All right.